I'm using the latest Inbox Copilot experience, and I'm going to use Copilot to help me resolve a failing test in my open source project. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the debug button in the test explorer, and that will allow me to see the details of the exception using exception handler. It has a conveniently paused debugging at this unhandled serialization exception. So I'm going to use this opportunity to ask Copilot why this might be happening. This single action is handing Copilot a list of helpful information that includes things like the locals, information about the call stack, and the code that caused the exception. Copilot has a hypothesis, but first it's asking me about the state of a variable called serialized. In order to confirm the idea, I'm going to go further up the call stack, find the variable, and share additional information. I will simply state, the serialized string is empty. Copilot is now suggesting, because I've got an empty string, it must have come from the 2JSON method on line 18. Copilot wants to know the details of the 2JSON method, so I'm going to navigate to that and share it with it via a convenient hash reference that passes line 23 to 35. That's simply a hash reference and the active selection. Copilot is building the context to give us a better answer to the solution. And in fact, now it has a code proposal that is not actually related to where the exception occurred. So I'm going to quickly review the answer and I'm going to accept it because it looks reasonable. Resetting the stream on line 29 makes sense in this context. Of course, the proof of any answer is in the testing stage. So I'm going to compile this code and rerun my test. And if I get a green light, that probably means I was successful. Excellent. We successfully used Copilot in Visual Studio to gather enough debugging context from our world-class debugger to identify a root cause from deeper in our code base. I'm debugging a simple app that calculates compound interest. Uh, I can look at the values in my locals window and it's obvious that compound interest is way too high. In fact, it's in the order of hundreds of millions. So you're probably aware you can use hash or the pound to include code references from your project. Um, active documents, you can reference things like lines of code, but you can also use it to include a reference. And in this instance, I'm going to use the locals reference. With this included in my question, uh, Copilot now knows the values in my local window. So now I can ask a question about the values my app produces, not just the code. So I can ask, has this value been calculated correctly. So you can see from the response that Copilot knows all about compound interest. More importantly though, it can review the values that went into calculating these values even without handing it the code that did the calculation itself. Copilot has suggested a correction um, to the rate. It has proposed uh, that the rate go from 3 to 0 0.03, which is simply just the ratio equivalent. And then we can simply rerun this again. Now it appears we have a much more reasonable value of 161% for compound interest. This app uses an API to grab thousands of my favorite songs from a catalog. I've set up a breakpoint at line 50 so that while debugging, I can review the data we pass from the API. The position of the breakpoint in the for each loop unfortunately means I will iterate through every single song and that will be slow and cumbersome. But we can speed this up by using conditional breakpoints. You can right click and select settings on your breakpoints to bring up the conditional dialog box. By selecting the conditions options, it allows you to define an expression. Now, if you're struggling to define an expression, Copilot can help. Selecting the text box will prompt Copilot to make suggestions on your behalf based on your code. Now that I understand these conditions a little better, I can select or create one that best matches my needs. This works for trace points too. So if you're looking to send data to the output window, you can select actions and Copilot can propose a logging message. In this example, I'm just gonna simply note which line of code was executed. So let's start debugging. And here I've hit the conditional breakpoint and I've avoided all those initial songs I wanted to ignore 
just like Copilot suggested. This has saved me a lot of time. There are a host of anti-patterns that can cause your application to become unresponsive. One of the more difficult to find and debug are deadlocks. So I'm going to start debugging this application and if it executes correctly, we should see four logging messages. But this is clearly getting stuck somewhere in the middle. To figure out what's going on, I'm going to hit the break all button from the debug menu. And instead of seeing an exception, we're greeted with the new deadlock notification. It provides a handy link to Ask Copilot, which opens up the chat window and Visual Studio can then hand Copilot enough information to analyze the problem. Copilot here is explaining what a deadlock is. That is essentially two or more threads waiting for each other in perpetuity. Copilot suggests having both threads acquire locks in the same order to avoid this kind of deadlock. So I'm going to use this convenient shortcut to ask, how can I refactor my code to ensure that locks are acquired in the same order? Copilot now provides me the opportunity to rewrite the code to fix the deadlock. Let's try the suggested fix by using the preview button and apply the code in the editor. So let's rebuild and debug this one more time. And now we see all four messages suggesting that our deadlock has been resolved.